Okay, everybody, it's here, a Sega Composer 2.0. Let's have a look. Right, everybody, so now we're gonna have a look at the brand new composing software from a Sega. So there's been a major overhaul of this licensed software. And quite frankly, I think it's been needed for quite some time. And I think everybody knew it. Uh, and it's really good to see that Asiga have done this because the Asigas are a beautiful machine. You know, I've got an Asiga Max UV. Um, I've got a load of different printers, but the Asiga Max UV just, it works really, really nicely. Uh, so let's have a look at the software. Let's see what it does. Let's see what the differences are. Uh, my personal first experiences are that it's very elegant and simple, which is exactly what we wanted to see to use such a nice printer. So let's have a look. So you can see on my desktop, I've got this um, wide range of different things. And that for another tutorial another day, we'll have a look at how this integrates with things like MediLink and Exacad, that sort of thing. But for today, let's just load it up. So you can see... We've got the nice little logo. We get this pop-up, very, very simple uh, experience. Just load up the composer. Uh, we can check for updates on the top right here. And there's gonna be a little bit of familiarity in the use of this software because quite obviously, if you're using something for the first time, it's gotta be simple, which is why they've done this. But at the same time, for users of this printer who have been using it for years now, then they want to decay to those people so that they don't feel too foreign in the use of this software and, and how it is. So we can, you know, look up historical um, uh, projects that we've done, uh, open new projects, or let's start a new one. So this one on the left, uh, I'm just going to click on uh, this printer, the Max UV that I have here. Uh, the last time I used it was with Denta model, which is what I'm going to use for the demo for this. But you can see just from the simple look of this, um, obviously this printer is offline at the minute, uh, but we can select all the different resins the same way that we used to be able to import things. We can bring in a new material library so we can open the material library uh, on your Asiga account, log in. Um, bring in you know a whole wide range of resins and you know every time you check uh, one of the nice things about open printers is the ability to bring in new resins and you know companies like Asiga uh, when they're open like this it's great to see that they will uh, look at making more additions to this library as time goes on which is um, you know they don't just rest on the laurels which is great um, they've also got now at the top of this, you can see how to import material file. Uh, so a little tutorial to show you, but let's close that for now. I'm going to presume we are just going to use the dental model resin, which uh, I've used last time. Obviously the same thing as usual. We have different uh, layer thicknesses for speed. If you want to increase that layer height, if we want to increase accuracy with less lines on the model. We can reduce it. If it's something like for the purpose which I'm going to print this one, this is going to be a model for a DSD mock-up. Uh, so this is a motivational mock-up for a patient that we're going to be trying on. So I really want that to be quite a low layer thickness. That's got to be around the 50 mark for me, at least 75 or less when you print in. Make sure that then you have less lines. And it means then that when we transfer that to the patient's mouth, if you're doing it the conventional way of taking and putting a wash impression and trying that in the patient's mouth, then you're not going to be passing on those details of steps in those layers. So if you really want to go to town, then maybe 25 microns, okay? So whichever you choose, we can select that there. Now, there is also now the option of the different build trays. So we have the universal tray, the low force tray, and the ultra gloss tray. And again, there'll be separate tutorials on that, which we'll uh, talk about later on. The um, the low force tray and the ultra gloss tray, uh, ultra gloss tray are really nice additions, especially the ultra gloss for splints. But again, that's for a different day, a different tutorial. So let's just click OK. And the first thing you can see is now that this is loaded up, it's a lot more streamlined. It's a lot simpler in what we can see. 
And what I really like is, like we had with some of the other software for some of the other um, companies like the Envision Tech software, the Accurata software, Sprint Race software, where you can very easily see what we're looking at in terms of position on the build platform because the build platform's there. Now, that build platform, if we think about it, when we're new to printing, it's kind of counterintuitive to place things flat on the build platform where naturally it's printing like this so when we print we're actually printing things upside down so one of the nice things is that we've got this uh, build platform ready in front of us which like i said you know it's counterintuitive when we first start looking at 3d printers and we first start using slicing software because in actual fact we're printing upside down but we don't think about that when we see the build platform it's actually you know, we're printing things and laying it flat, which is actually upside down. So for us now to be able to see that, I really like that. I think that's a nice little addition. Now, something which you might not do, and this is kind of off the tangent here a little bit with looking at this software, but if you're new to printing, you're looking at this software for the first time, then this box you can see here, what does that show us? Well, that shows us the boundaries of what we're able to print within on this build platform. So you're not only seeing the build platform here, but you're seeing the entire volume of what's possible to fit in there. Now, obviously, a Sega are well known for their ability to be able to create stacks, for you to be able to print multiple models. So we can print a couple of models, add a stacking shelf, and then print another model and be able to print a few at a time and then just dismantle them at the end, rather than two on a platform, print, take them off, two on a platform, and so on. So that really goes to town, and it, you know, it comes in in a big way in the bigger Seeger printers, where you've got a lot bigger print platform. But for the purposes of today, this is just a brief overview. Well, I won't go into that, we'll leave that to another tutorial another day. But for the purpose of today, just to show you, let's see how simple it is with the new software to just bring a model in, bring a model in and then set it to print. OK, so what do we have here at the top? Well, we have different ways of being able to uh, look at the scale of the parts, move the parts, rotate the parts. Everything is pretty much self-explanatory in its you know, little image that we can see here. Obviously, with thin printed things in dentistry, you've got to be careful about doing things like mirroring objects. And maybe from a personal perspective, maybe a nice addition if they're really going to town with this Asiga now, would be to make a dental version of this software where we get rid of little things like that to make it easier for a general dentist to not make simple mistakes like that. But for the purposes of this, let's show you. So first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up a new model. So on the left hand side, you can see this little box with the plus on. We're gonna add a part. I'm gonna select a file. I'm gonna bring in that motivational mock-up. And then I'm gonna click open. And you can see that initially this is brought in upside down. So this motivational mock-up we've done here. Um, this we need to print the right way. But even just at this point now, maybe it's me, maybe it's because everything looks new, but I think it looks better. And I think it's probably utilizing the graphics card a little bit better with the STLs. So anyway, we brought this model in. We can look at auto placing it. We can generate spots. But before we do that, we need to look at which way up it should go. So again, little tutorial for you. Separate, going off at a tangent. Say we are looking at this model. We can't print this like this, can we? Because obviously it's printing upside down. What would happen if we tried to print that? It's not touching the base, so it's not going to connect and it's just going to drop off. So when we're 3D printing, we need to have it flat on the build platform, okay? So for those of you who've done a lot of 3D printing, my apologies for going over the basics. So we need to put things flat. So there's this little icon here, which looks like it's something falling over flat. Great. We're just going to rotate that and click onto it here. And there you go, bang, it's done, straight in. And now we can zoom around and see where it is. We can rotate around. And we still have the same functions as usual with being able to click on something, rotate the object if we want to by holding down the right mouse button. 
rotate it in different ways. You know, we have all the same abilities of, you know, being able to control and Z to go back, take it back to where it was. But once we've got that in the right sort of position, then we can look at going to generating supports. Okay, so generating supports here, I'm just going to use the default presets. We can go to advanced, but the nice thing about the new software is, yes, we have that ability to just keep it really simple of just clicking on the support, clicking apply, and it'll do it. But there's one problem with that, and I'm going to show you one. So if I click apply, if we have a model like this, we don't want this to be lifted up. So we do need to go to the advanced settings. So I'm going to click Control and Z. I'm going to go to advanced. And this is where then we would take off height level if we're printing a model. And we can save that as a different preset. So save, for example, model, no height level in that sort of thing. And then it will create those supports without lifting the model off the platform. So making sure that everything as we're printing it is going to be printing appropriately. We might not need things like that, but you can select whether to have internal supports, that sort of thing. But my preference is to add them anyway, just in case, because what you don't want if you're printing something really pretty like this is for the inside to just not be supported well and you get a little bit of collapse or whatever. And it all is down to you, how you've designed your model, the thickness you've done, whether you've added... Um, you know, holes for it to drain resin, that sort of thing. And again, you can see here the way that these holes have been added here, here, and here, that if we're upside down, why is it printed like that? Because if we print them at the sides and it's upside down, the resin's not going to get out there, is it? Whereas if we print these with the holes here, uh, then we can have that so when it's printing that way up, then the resin can escape, okay? So that's just a little, again, a little off at a tangent. So we've got that there all set. Everything is ready to print. It's going to print like this. This is how it's going to look when it comes out of the printer. And then we just click on the printer and set it to print. Um, select the build uh, name, select to go, and we type that in, test model mock-up. Okay. And obviously the printer's offline, so I can't click next but then it would set it, set it to go, and we can always go to the software, um, through the software or through the printer itself to select that to start, which you would know from having a Max UV. But otherwise, a nice little intro to you to show you how nicely this has evolved now as a software for slicing. Um, I think you'll agree it's a lot better looking. It was definitely worth the overhaul, so kudos to Asiga for putting the effort in there. It's a great new addition to being able to use that printer just in time for my nice new home setup to be able to use this. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little introduction review. And if you have an Asiga, then get downloading it on their website. Okay, guys, and more tutorials coming soon on all of the different steps if you are new to it. So thanks, guys. See you soon.